Right? Isn't that what we said? That's what we're doing, is discussing <laughs> what... You're already dead! Tabletop RPGs. A great place to get guys who look like this, and this, to listen to this guy. About if you can climb up on that chair, or make sweet love to a dragon. I love you. Well, it all starts at 600 CE, in India where a game based around moving a military around the board to capture the opposing king was invented. Getting popularized through trading, hitting it big in 1200 when it came to Europe, and evolving into the game we know today, Dungeons and... Oh. Not... Not Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, what, what was it? Oh. It's chess. So when some George Heinrich Rudolf Johann von Reswitz guy wanders in and says... How about instead of chess, we add some flavor? In 1824, the boys said, hey, why not? And boom, you get Kriegspiel, literally meaning war game in German. Now this is a big deal because now you have specific pieces indicating specific things and role playing as a commander, navigating your troops around the battlefield. So what does chess and Kriegspiel have to do with my precious D&D? Well, now we've established a tabletop board different pieces representing different things and playing out a role in the game itself. Let's fast forward to 1971. Chainmail was released to the public utilizing characterized miniatures to portray the story of a medieval tale about heroes, superheroes, and wizards fighting creatures such as elves, orcs, and dragons, selling a massive 100 copies a month. Chainmail eventually got bought by TSR after two updated editions in 1975. TSR at this point had produced a couple other games before the acquisition, a very similar game to Chainmail called Cavaliers and Roundheads, and started publishing Dungeons and Dragons. Working out of their basement, they sold a thousand copies in ten months, and in January of 1975 ended up selling a second batch of a thousand copies in five months. Now, TSR and their catalog was expanding, and sales were on the up and up, raking in $300,000 in revenue, having tournaments for Dungeons and Dragons, and adding expansions like Greyhawk, Blackmore, Eldridge, Wizardry and Gods, and Demigods and Heroes. They officially released a base set of Dungeons and Dragons in 1977. Things were looking great for TSR. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> then Advanced Dungeons and Dragons came out. At first, it received critical acclaim, getting a full miniature line with the release of multiple expansions and doing generally well financially. That's until the 80s, when Karens decided to go on their own medieval-esque adventure. Noticing that their kids were killing demons and having fun in between bringing them Oreos and milk on their weekly cult meetup, eventually leading to TSR and other tabletop RPG distributors' demise. Sort of. At this point, this is when Wizards of the Coast stepped in and purchased TSR in 1997. Ready? One. While following the acquisition in 2000, Ryan Dancy went ahead and introduced D&D materials under an open gaming license, which allowed players to modify and redistribute modifications to Dungeons & Dragons, which is where you can get games like Pathfinder, Cyberpunk, and Starfinder, just to name a few. So after a few more edition additions and profitable sales, we end up here today. So back to the original question, why do tabletop RPGs matter? It gives people a chance to escape reality and be a mystical elf or an angry dwarf for a few hours every week. It gives people a chance to be creative and come up with constructive ideas. And most importantly, it's a great way to spend time with friends and family. That's all I have today. Thank you for spending time looking to tabletops with me. Until next time.